and welcome back. So today we're going to continue our study of the three states of matter, and this is actually our last week in this unit. So we're going to spend a lot of time this week reviewing everything that we've learned so far in some different ways. And then on the last day of this week, we're going to go ahead and take an assessment. And this assessment is to let me, your teacher, you know how well you've learned the material that we've talked about so far. And it also lets your teacher know if there's anything they need to go back and help you learn again um, and do some reteaching with you. So it's just a way for us to measure how well you're doing so far and if there's anything that you need help on. So you have a choice for today on how you'd like to do today's lesson. So let me share with you what the activity is and then I'll let you know what your choices are. So for today, you have this article called Three States of Matter, okay, and it looks like this top slide here, and then there are questions that you are going to answer, and all of the answers to those questions can be found by reading the article called Three States of Matter. Now here's where your choice comes in. If you would like, you can shut the video down for today, and you can go ahead and read this on your own and answer the questions on your own. That's totally fine. Then when you're finished, you'll just submit it through Canvas. If you prefer, you can stay on this video, and I'm actually going to read the article aloud, and I'm going to read the questions aloud. I will not be going over the answers to the questions, but just in case you would prefer somebody to read this to you, if you stay on the video, I'm going to do that for you. So again, if you would like to do it on your own, feel free to shut off the video, and I'll meet you back here again tomorrow. If you would like, stay tuned, and I'm going to go ahead and start to read our article now. The name of this article is The Three States of Matter by Leslie Cargyle. Let's take a walk into an imaginary kitchen. There are ice cubes in the freezer, water running from the faucet, and steam rising from a pot of boiling water. We will turn off our pretend faucet so we don't waste water. What do these three things all have in common? Simply put, our imaginary kitchen shows us the three different states of matter. Matter makes up everything that is in our universe. Atoms join together making molecules. Molecules stack together in different ways to make the three different states of matter, solids, liquids, and gases. Solids are easy to think about. The chair you're sitting in is a solid. The floor you walk on is solid. Pretty much everything that has a definite shape is a solid. The molecules of solids are like a box full of oranges stacked tightly together, so tight that they can't move. Liquids include the water you drink or the oceans that roll around the earth. A liquid will take the shape of whatever you put it in. Think of a beanbag chair that is missing some of its stuffing. It will roll around, but it stays together. The molecules of a liquid are close and stick together, but not so close that they can't slide around each other. If you pour water from one container into another without spilling, you will have the same amount of water. Gases are different than the other two types of matter. They are very loosely attached, some escaping their bonds and disappearing. If we were back in our imaginary kitchen and we tried to catch all of the steam molecules, we would find it nearly impossible. Heat can affect the state of matter. Let's take an imaginary ice cube and set it on our stove in a pot. Turn the imaginary heat on. Soon the heat has melted our ice cube into a puddle of water. Leave the heat on a little while longer and our puddle of water will evaporate into the air. Even though you can't see the water, it's not gone. It turned into water vapor, which is a gas in the air around you. Try it out with the help of an adult and see what happens. Can you catch all of your steam and turn it back into an ice cube? Probably not. But add some food coloring to a pitcher of water and then fill an ice tray. What you will have is an exciting afternoon exploring the worlds of solids, liquids, and gases. Okay, and then our second page contains our questions. Question one, atoms that are joined together are called A, liquids, B, molecules, C, shapes, D, solids. Question two, 
what shape is a liquid? A, sphere, B, circle, C, solid shape, D, the shape of its container. And I will share with you, if I'm going a little bit fast for you, um, just keep in mind, you can always just pause the video and then unpause it when you're ready to go on, so please don't feel rushed. Number three, what happens to water when it evaporates? A, it turns into a solid. B, it turns into a gas. C, it turns into an atom. D, it disappears. Question four, what causes water to evaporate? A, warm temperatures. B, cold temperatures. C, electricity, D, food coloring. Question five, how are molecules in a solid different from molecules in a liquid? How are molecules in a solid different from molecules in a liquid? A, molecules in a liquid are more tightly packed than molecules in a solid. B, molecules in a liquid cannot move, but molecules in a solid can. C, molecules in a solid are more tightly packed than molecules in a liquid. D, molecules are loosely packed and easily turn into steam. And lastly, question number six. List two examples of solids, liquids, and gases. So you're going to list two solids, two liquids, and two gases. When you've completed this activity, make sure to submit it through Canvas, and we'll meet you back here tomorrow, friends. Bye.